Tragedies that shook the nation and the world. Triumphs that inspired us and united us. Changes of heart and changes of fortune. 1997, history in the making. This is a Nightline special presentation with Jim Whaley. Good evening. Tonight we'll be casting an eye over an enormous spectrum of the past year. Some of the events in particular making 1997 a year to be long remembered. From our London bureau, Mark Burroughs will look back over the shock of Princess Diana's death. Back home, Paul Lynham will take us through the witty and the woeful moments of politics. And Hugh Rimmington will revisit Threadbow the small mountain village that made Australia hold its breath. As well, Mark Barlin will take us through the highs and lows of the year in sport and will throw a salute to some of those who, in 1997, made their mortal farewells. The Adelaide sailors pounded on the hull of the upturned yacht. Suddenly, at the other end of the boat, Tony Bullimore emerges. He's alive. It was, it was like heaven, it was like heaven. Fueled by too much sun and drink, they've become the spoil sports of the cricket season. Meeting of police, government and sporting bodies today deciding enough is enough. The body of 27-year-old Ennis William Cosby was found in the early hours of the morning. He was my hero. I, William Jefferson Clinton, will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. Bell offered no resistance when police arrived on the doorstep of his South African hideaway. Simpson was found liable for the wrongful death of waiter Ron Goldman. And it was yes to the other seven counts, Simpson found liable for the deaths of Goldman and his ex-wife, Nicole. Former bankrupt, already serving three years for fraud, was then sentenced to a further four years in jail. As news spread of the extortion, biscuit giant Arnott's worst nightmare was being realised. Michael Jackson was said to be with his wife, Debbie Rowe, for the birth. Ten skin grafts later, he's back where he belongs. One of the veterans of Chinese communism, but also the man who opened this once closed Stalinist society to the world. Dolly is unique, the first ever sheep, indeed the first ever mammal, to be born a clone of her mother. One man is dead, more than 300 people in four states have hepatitis A, and the government's declared Wallace Lake a no-go area. It was the arrival of these mercenaries in PNG that sparked this crisis. Their forced departure should help defuse it. We certainly have fears that there is a serial killer at loose in Perth. Streeton showed no emotion when Justice Margaret White sentenced him to the maximum penalty of life in prison. The bomb, which was packed with nails and ball bearings, went off on the front terrace of a cafe. The Jeffrey Rush and Shine. This is just fantastic to get. 21 females, 18 males, head shaved and most covered in purple shrouds. A year on, the trio are now bound for Bangkok's notorious and overcrowded Klong Prem prison, where life is harsh. After 126 days, the end came suddenly, swiftly and brutally. As one group went from room to room inside, hunting down the rebels, another group hustled clearly overjoyed hostages down the back stairs. No one deserves to go through what I have been through. He plans to sue the education department for failing in its duty of care. The stampede to escape the blaze only added to the death toll. The fire occurred beside one of Islam's holiest sites at one of the holiest times of the year. The giant mill that's dominated Newcastle for generations will be gone within two years, and so will almost all its 3,000 workers. Together, the tobacco companies would pay out between 250 and 300 billion dollars over 25 years. It took just two words for Ellen DeGeneres to be elevated from sitcom actress to gay icon. I'm gay. Their much-feared president, Mobutu, had fled. His brutal and corrupt dictatorship was finally over. Another corporate prince of the 80s struck down. Brian Quinn is tonight in jail. Tonight, we have been comprehensively defeated. 
Tony Blair, the 43-year-old barrister, had delivered Labour's greatest victory ever. A goal in the second half proved the trigger. Police were set upon as a flare was fired onto the ground. In there, it's mayhem really here. A security camera captured Kerry Whelan just before the moment when police believed she was abducted. Brigitte Muir set a goal nine years ago to climb the highest mountain on each continent. Yesterday, via the same route taken by Sir Edmund Hillary, she conquered Everest. The event will be $1.2 million richer from her brush with Channel 7, a far cry from her original claim of more than $6 million. He and longtime girlfriend Leonie Jones were driving home from a night out when they had an argument. She was in the process of driving off and that's when this damage happened. The two women stowed away aboard the vessel in New Zealand. They travelled to Singapore and were only discovered when the ship cruised to Australia. Eight million North Koreans are at risk of starving to death in a famine caused by two years of flooding. We got him! For the victims' families in court, unrestrained emotion straight after the verdict. <laughs> Detectives say he sent faxes warning he had contaminated a jar of coffee and a carton of yoghurt at two Sydney supermarkets. This is the module damaged in yesterday's collision. Behind the smashed solar panels, a puncture the size of a postage stamp that threatened to decompress the entire station. The body of Peter Shoebridge was found outside near his Blackwood furniture workshop. The four sisters were stabbed in their beds as they slept. Others have a bit of character and a bit of personality and a strange to me doesn't always like that. A dazzling fireworks display rattled Hong Kong's gleaming towers of commerce. The British kept a stiff upper lip in the face of the worsening weather, and the children sang stoically of a brighter tomorrow. In a midnight ceremony, a somber Prince Charles formally handed over more than six million of his mother's subjects to a communist regime. Pride rode in on their warships and on board their trucks as 4,000 troops of the world's largest army took up barracks still warm from their British predecessors. There was a terrible panic. People jammed together, some trapped underwater. Just unexpectedly hurtling debris hundreds of metres over the crowded foreshore. Eleven people were killed instantly. 150 others in the crowd were cut down where they stood. Now, what would appear to be irrefutable evidence that one of the century's great tyrants is still around. The search for 14-month-old Jaden Lesky was the most intensive since the disappearance of Harold Holt. Scientists are still waxing lyrical after Sojourner rolled onto Mars yesterday. In all, the former gay prostitute was the suspect for five killings, including last week's brutal slaying of Gianni Versace. This is the work, and it will go on all night as emergency services in shifts try to recover the first of the bodies. The naked body of Michiko Okiyama was found in Can Swampland on Saturday morning by a curious resident. Three violent attacks on the Serrano exhibition at the weekend forced the cancellation. The five Australians were at the start of their journey when terror struck. Emergency officials recovered hundreds of pieces of John Denver's experimental plane in Monterey Bay. I believe it is an appropriate time for the death penalty to be waived. The price, $1.7 million. Despite the death of an 18-year-old girl and 50 reported cases in the past two months, the health department is urging people not to panic. No one Nandruku was able to sidestep the law, but not his club. <laughs> After soaring their way out of their cells, they reached the perimeter fence. Accomplices on the outside then opened fire on guards. Commissioner Nader found Mrs Arena's accusations of a high-level pedophile cover-up false in all respects. His death was a lonely thing, a motel room and a needle. The bodies of the missing teenagers were found in dense bushland just over the Victorian border near Bombala yesterday. After more than two years on the run, the suspected pedophile was cornered in Central America by a 60 Minutes crew. 
They opened fire with machine guns, shooting indiscriminately for 45 minutes. Seconds after Telstra shares hit the trading screens, the price soared, giving the 1.2 million public investors the banana. In the a dozen families were left homeless by the blaze, which swept through in minutes. A fire thought to be deliberately lit claimed the lives of two firefighters at Lithgow and hundreds of thousands of hectares of bushland burned near Coonabarabran. Bill Skate allegedly boasting he's a PNG crime lord. He sued the driver, but most notably the pub, which was today found to be negligent. Several of Mrs Mandela's supporters have now confessed to killing on her orders. Things went horribly wrong. For that, I am deeply sorry. The toll severe. Many homes didn't stand a chance. 125 nations today began signing the historic treaty, the result of a seven-year campaign which had been a passion of Princess Diana's. Diana's promotion of the anti-landmine campaign was, of course, just part of her legacy. And after the break, we'll take a closer look at the passing of the People's Princess.